And now, we come to the culmination of the entire process of the I self-realizing itself. That is Malkus. This is existence within the temporal present moment. Now, that may sound simple. <laughs> Let's look at that for a second. The temporal present moment. How long is a moment? What is the duration of a moment? This is the realm of duration, that final component of time. So everything here is bound by time. Time and space. This is the physical solid manifestation of the I. Infinite manifestation of the I. So what is the duration of a moment? It has no duration. It is infinitely finite. The present moment is of infinitely finite duration, which is to say, no duration. The temporal present moment also is so fine that it has no sequence. And it is the moment in which there is no change. So in the temporal present moment, we have Kether, we have the I. The I who is unchanging, who is uh, simultaneous and does not have sequence, and is, who is so all-encompassing that it does not have duration is the same thing as the infinitely finite temporal present moment. And that is where everything exists. It exists only in this present moment. Things don't exist in the past. Things don't exist in the future. The only time, the only place in which we actually exist and experience is right now. In this infinitely finite present moment. Without duration, without sequence, without change. That is Malkuth. <clears throat> Just like that is Kether. <clears throat> you know, Kether, of course, contains everything else. Malkuth also contains everything else. It is the receptacle of that descending awareness as it explores and realizes itself, the culmination of that is Malkuth. So Malkuth, in its aspect of container, is also the realm of consequence. In Hod, we had choice. Oh, the maker of decisions, the chooser, the decider, 
Well, Malkuth is the realm of consequence. The consequence of every choice that is made. Okay? Because <clears throat> the universe <clears throat> is so integrated, everything is so integrated with everything else that every choice that I make, the rest of the universe repositions, adapts, it changes in relation to my choice. So everything that makes choice, every choice that is made, impacts the universe, causes the universe to change, to alter itself in some way, and is in that way creative, but... <clears throat> That creativity, in general, is not intentional creativity. It's consequential. It happens because it is the nature of the universe to adapt itself to every decision that is made. But, you know, of course, when we make those decisions consciously with the collective in consideration and combined with our own power, then it becomes a truly creative act. <clears throat> so, Malkuth is consequence in the temporal present moment, the collection of the whole tree comes down into Malkuth. Every bit of the tree is present in Malkuth. Okay. The paths that inform Malkuth come from every part of the tree. The first comes from Hokma. All of the essential meaning in Hokma is expressed and manifest in Maku. Every bit of it finds its full and final expression in Maku. And with this path comes consequence. This is the power of consequence. That impulse of the universe to always adapt to everything that happens, to every choice that is made. It adapts. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Why does it adapt? It adapts because the universe knows exactly what every part of itself needs, every experience that it needs to reach the state at which its essential meaning fully realizes and expresses itself. So it knows what is needed and provides everything that is needed for that to occur, for us to have our perfect expression of the I. The universe knows what we need to reach that state in this temporal, sequential universe. Okay? And that is provided through this connection with Hokma and the, the universal essential meaning. Okay? 
The second path comes from Bina. Straight into Malkuth. Now, this is the input of the greater self. Okay? That aspect of consequence that we call karma. Now, this is a very personal consequence <clears throat> based upon our, our own decisions that each have consequence. And it is the greater self that personalizes the lessons <clears throat> that we need to to learn the, the things that we need to experience so that we will come to that place where we perfectly express the I in that infinitely finite temporal present moment consciously <clears throat> that's the goal, if you will, that's where it's all heading. <clears throat> the perfect expression of the eye in the temporal present moment. <clears throat> the perfect conscious expression of the eye, because that is the nature of our awareness. It must be intentional and fully conscious here in Malkuth. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so that is the second input to Malkuth, the second building block of Malkuth from the supernal realm. Okay. The third comes from Gedula. This is the presence of the great power of collectivity within the temporal present moment. <clears throat> now, for human beings, we sort of shut this out in general. <clears throat> We're so disconnected from the collective. But this is the conduit of that power, and when we honor that in the choices we make our choices become powerful things for the good become powerful healing life-giving life-producing etc choices that take us all forward in this process of coming to that perfect expression of the I in the temporal present moment so this is the input of collectivity. And when we pay attention to that collective input, our power grows a thousandfold, <laughs> infinitely. We increase our participation in the universe, in the temporal present moment, when we add the collective into all of our efforts, all of our choices. The fourth comes from Gebura, and this is indeed the unique power of every individual, and is specifically my unique power in my experience of the temporal present moment. It's there. I can always tap into it. The fullness of that power, especially when the collective awareness enters in, because that's when my power shines in the context of the collective in the temporal present moment. Okay, now the fifth is the path of Tov between Yesod 
and Malkuth. This is the first of the lettered paths into Malkuth. This is the moon, the planetary moon. This is our personal planet. This brings rhythm to the universe. Rhythm, the lunar cycle, lunations, the month. This is our personal timekeeper, more than the sun. The sun is these big stretches of time, the years. We only have a handful of those in one lifetime. You know, passages of the sun, circuits of the sun. But the moon is always with us, always, you know, determining our life, our experience, our emotions, our thoughts. This is the moon, the rhythm of life, the timekeeper of life. It's really the moon crossing the path of Mem, of water, that the mother letter of water, that gives us that experience of duration, the final component of time. It was Beth, the path of Saturn, between Kether and Tiferet, crossing Shin, the mother letter of fire that gave us change. Then it was the path of Resh, the sun, between Tiferet and Yesod, crossing the mother letter of Aleph that gave us sequence. And then it's here the path of Tav between Yesod and Malkuth, the moon, crossing Mem, that path of water that uh, between uh, resonance, uh, between resonance and dissonance, that perpetual traveling back and forth between these two, that, that we do, that is existence in this realm, <clears throat> crossing that path, the moon, the timekeeper, gives us duration, which is an experience of consciousness. Duration, seeing the sequence as it progresses, is, gives us the experience of duration and time. Okay. So that is finalized with Toph. And so Malkuth is a rhythmic place, a cyclic place. Uh, it comes and it goes and it's always changing. But there is a degree of continuity to that change. And this is reinforced through Toph, okay? It also illustrates how the astral integrates into the physical. And it does so through rhythm. Through the nature of rhythm, the astral uh, significance becomes physical materia. And that is one of the things that binds us to physicality. Because we are truly sentient creatures bound into physical material existence. We are not free from this material existence until it releases us. Until we have reached a certain point in our experiences where we are released from this incarnation. It's only 
when we have attained those particular experiences in this lifetime that we are that those uh, bindings are released it's interesting that crossing of that uh, supernal crossing of beth saturn with shin fire corresponds in the in the human body with the the nexus the nerve nexus of the brain the electrical activity the regulator of the electrical activity in the body essentially the brain okay that second crossing of Resh, the sun, with Aleph, the air, corresponds to the nexus here in the chest, the solar plexus, the heart, and the breath. Okay? Then this crossing of Tav, moon, with water. is the gut nexus, the slower nexus that really integrates us into our physical bodies. This is the totally unconscious aspect of our awareness, of the bodily awareness, of the awareness in the body. Okay? Now, <clears throat> The sixth path is Tzadi, coming from Netzach into Malkuth, the path of Aquarius, okay, the water bearer. Now Tzadi, the Hebrew word Tzadi, means fish hook. Now, this is an interesting reference to Nun. <clears throat> the path from Gebura into Yesod, that transition from the sentient self, you know, excuse me, transition from the solitary self into the sentient self. It's really the birth of the sentient self. It's a reference to that because Nun, the Hebrew word Nun, means fish. Okay? So here we have the fish hook. And it's also a reference to the final path of Kuf, which corresponds to Pisces, which is, of course, the two fish tied together. Okay? So it is a reference to both of these water paths, zodiacal water paths, here, from Netzach coming into Malkuth. And this is emotion. Mm. That power of emotion and how that binds us to physicality. How that binds us to our bodies how that integrates us into physical matter. So it's the power of resonance, which we call emotion. Okay? We experience that resonance through this path as emotion. We connect with other in this way through emotion that binds us to living. It fascinates us. We always need more of it. You know? We're always generating it. Always encountering it. Always being influenced by it. Always seeing, perceiving, the world, the temporal present moment, 
through this lens of emotion. It's always there, always binding us to the temporal present moment. And the final path, the seventh path, is Kuf coming from Hod to Malkuf. This is the path of Pisces, the last of the zodiacal signs, a water sign, symbol of the two fishes who are tied together at the tail and are swimming, always trying to get rid of, get away from each other, always trying to break that connection. Okay, this is Pisces. <clears throat> now, kuf, the Hebrew word kuf, means the back of the head. So this refers quite a bit to the subconscious, but mostly what it's describing here is the brain-bound awareness. Now, this is a creature of habit, the brain. This is how and the avenue through which the sentient self, an astral creature, an entirely astral uh, awareness, integrates into our physical bodies. For humans, obviously. <clears throat> It's through the brain that awareness integrates and moves around, perceives, experiences, expresses its essential meaning within the temporal present moment. The physical, solid, temporal present moment. This is how awareness can function. Without the brain, awareness, human awareness, cannot function in the temporal present moment. It cannot enter into incarnation and function, interact with other. Okay? Or realize itself requires this integration through brain, okay? So, that's the brain-bound intellect, which is always rooted in emotion. <laughs> all of its decisions, all of the deciding is based upon the valuations made in Hod rooted in the emotional reality of Netzach. All oh, of brain bound awareness is based upon the fruits of resonance. <clears throat> so when we talk about the intellect, we're still talking about valuations rooted in emotion. They're not objective because they are plucked from our intellect which is uh, the intellect manipulates emotion, the fruit of resonance. It is not truly objective. True objectivity comes from Hokma, that connection with Hokma. That's where true objective perception comes from, not from Hod, not from the rational intellect, 
Okay. <clears throat> and we are bound to our physical existence because of this integration with our brain. We are fascinated by the complexity of it all. We have to see what comes next. We have to see how the story ends. We are just bound by this fascination with life, with living, with the sequence, with the newness of every moment. See, that's the thing. We can't predict anything with absolute certainty because it's all filled with infinite change in sequence. So we can't see what those changes are going to bring, what the next change is going to be. You know, all we can live with is the, the change within the infinitely finite present moment. Because that's all we live in. That's all we have cognizance of in the temporal realm. To have higher cognizance, we have to, with our awareness, step out of the temporal realm and perceive with higher levels of our awareness, with Awareness that is not brain-bound awareness. Awareness that is not tied into, enslaved by that habit, the habitual, the sequential. Uh, yeah. Only when we step out of that part of human awareness do we have higher perceptions. And that's very easy to do. And <laughs> we do it all the time. Anyway, <clears throat> so this is Malkuth, the infinitely finite temporal present moment. Now it is, it is excruciatingly difficult for a normal human awareness to consciously encompass only that infinitely finite present moment. When it does, it is united with the I. It is in Kether. And that is a difficult way to unite with Kether. Let's put it that way. Ordinarily, with our awareness, we are cognizant of sort of a cloud of nowness. We exist only in that infinitely finite point, but we include what has happened, you know, in our perception of the present moment. We cannot really perceive, generally, the present moment without the continuity uh, provided to our awareness by what has transpired. Because we're always aware of what has transpired. Memory is always present with us. It is always part of our awareness, okay? So we bring that with our awareness into that infinitely finite present moment. But the only way to connect with the I through that infinitely finite present moment is to be just within that infinitely finite present moment. Excuse me. When that connection with Kether is made through that infinitely finite present moment, 
we, we step into the infinitely infinite present moment of now in which everything exists from the perspective of Kether. But from the perspective of Malkuth, everything exists within an infinitely finite present moment. That's really the main lesson of Malkuth, that it's all Kether. <laughs> like I said in the beginning, this image is exactly the same as this image. This image is exactly the same as this image. It's that simple. It's all one thing. So we're talking here about all these different levels of awareness and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's all one thing. No part in this tree of life is more important or less important than another. As it's all one thing. It's all part of the body of the one thing. Of equal importance. Every bit of it. <clears throat> That's the tree of life. So, <clears throat> next uh, video will be sort of a summation. And some other observations I have about the tree of life having to do with uh, its balance, its integration, etc. So, until then, bye-bye.